You have to learn to get up from the table when love is no longer being served anymore. What's up my beautiful people? It's Aaliyah here and I'm back with another Mental Health Monday video for you guys today. If you're new to my channel, if this is your first time seeing my face, make sure you smash the subscribe button to become part of the family. And if you already subscribed to me, welcome back. Alright guys, so you see the title of today's video. Today I want to talk about mental health versus toxic relationships. And yes, versus. For me, I feel like mental health and toxic relationships don't go together, like, at all. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the definition of toxic relationships. I'm going to give you guys this quote that I found that I really, really wanted to share with you guys about toxic relationships and love and all that stuff. And then we're going to go into why I feel like mental health and toxic relationships don't go together. And I'm going to give you guys a little story time on my personal experience with toxic relationships then we're gonna go into what to do next what now what to do when you feel like you're in a toxic relationship all right so just to start off the definition of toxic relationships there isn't one like I try to do research and there wasn't any like specific definition of like boom this is what toxic relationships is and instead of just thinking of it as a definition think of it as a type of behavior think of it as a type of trait if that makes sense so like I said there's no specific definition of toxic relationships and I did my research online and I found this amazing article on ourselvesblack.com and they have an article on toxic relationships and while I was reading they said something that was like wow I never thought of it that way in this article there's a doctor her name is dr. Sherry Bird Carter and she's an author and blogger on psychologytoday.com dr. Carter basically said for toxic relationships you want to acknowledge the traits and behaviors and she also said I'm just gonna read straight off of here I want to acknowledge that there is abuse of power and control demandingness self-centeredness negativity criticism dishonesty demeaning comments attitudes and jealousy I feel like that sentence kind of wraps up what toxic relationships is like what traits toxic relationships have and I just wanted to share that with you most toxic relationships have to do with abuse of power like Dr. Carter said jealousy negativity criticism any comments dishonesty disrespect all that stuff like that another thing that I wanted to point out is that not everyone views toxic relationships the same so what you may view as toxic I may not view as toxic some people don't think jealousy in a relationship is toxic like for me I don't really think jealousy in a relationship is toxic it depends on the level of jealousy that's in the relationship it depends on the level of toxicity that's going on so like if they're like on a level one whatever but if you're on level 50 we're like you're telling your partner they can't do x y and z because you're jealous and you're insecure and blah, blah 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 like i feel like that's very toxic i even tried to come up with a definition of toxic myself like toxic relationship and i couldn't even come up with like a definition it was basically like i wrote down that toxic relationships is just a relationship that you are in that you don't even know why you were there anymore that you're holding on just because of the love and the history and the person's very disrespectful like there isn't just like one specific definition like it's so true it's not just a specific thing it's uh it's traits as a whole there's many different signs of toxic relationships and i'm gonna go over that in one second all right so to my next point i found this quote on the internet that i really 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 wanted to share with you guys and i just feel like it really just spoke to me like if you've been in toxic relationships this has like it's kind of like an eye opener it's kind of like this woke me up you know what i mean like this is like whoa like i wish somebody would have told me this while i was in the relationship so the quote that i found online is by nina simone and it says you have to learn to get up from the table when love is no longer being served anymore and i just feel like that really really spoke to me after i read that quote i was just like wow like i wish somebody would have said that to me because we stay in these toxic relationships and i feel like no one can ever understand but we think about the love that was once there we think about how it was in the beginning when you guys first got together and the love was so strong and everything was beautiful and and the person cared about you and they loved you and we stay in these relationships because of the memories and not because of what's in the now you think about what was before and not what is going on now which is very very sad to think of because i used to do that all the time with all my previous relationships um I used to just stay in them because I used to think about how the person treated me in the beginning. I saw that person's potential and I saw that that person could be someone great. And instead of thinking of how they are now, instead of thinking of how are they treating me now, let's not think about how they were treating me in the beginning or what they could be treating me like. Let's think about how they're treating me now and right now they're not treating me so kind and right now I don't feel the love. 
So it's like we stay in these toxic relationships because we we see the potential of these men and we see the potential of these women and it's like I know they could be someone great and uh, I don't know that's like a whole nother video actually I'm gonna get into that in a whole nother video like the expectations of your partner or the expectations of whoever because having expectations for people is kind of disappointing if that makes sense just to sum up whatever I'm trying to say about this is that so think of who that person is right now don't think of that person who they were in the beginning when they were giving you all the gifts and the love and the and the hugs and the kisses and the cute text messages and the bringing you food or something like that don't think of that don't think of oh i know this person could be this think of that this person is disrespecting me this person is not treating me like a girlfriend or a boyfriend this person is diminishing my character this person is x y and z you know what i mean that's why i really love that quote because i wish somebody would have said that to me when i was in my previous relationships because i promise you like it would have probably given me a wake-up call that, that is also another video for another day, like what to do when your friend is in a toxic relationship. Because I know people have their own views on your friends being in toxic relationships and how to handle it and stuff like that. I know that some people think that, oh, it's none of your business. And then some people may think of it as that this is your friend and you want the best for them. Let me know if you guys want a Mental Health Monday video on expectations and relationships. And if you want another video on friends in toxic relationships. So now we're gonna go into the why. Why do I feel like toxic relationships and mental health don't go together? And it's very, very simple. If the person does not care about your human being, what makes you think that they're gonna care about your mental health? Think about that. Say it to yourself slowly, like, what makes you think that if the person does not care about you, why would they care about your mental health? If that person doesn't respect you, if that person doesn't care about you or your family, if that person doesn't care about you as a human care about your human being they're not going to respect your mental health period they're not going to care about your mental health they're not going to care about it instead nine times out of ten they're going to take advantage of it because in their mind you're weak-minded in their mind they can take control of you and that's where that abuse of power that dr carter was talking about they just feel like they can just take control of you because they know you're going to listen to them and they know you're not going to have a mind of your own and they they know that you're going to want to do anything to make them happy regardless if it makes you unhappy and another point is that it's just damaging to stay in those type of relationships if they don't care about you or your mental health that's very damaging to you because it feels like the relationship is very one-sided it feels like the relationship is all about the other person when really it should be about two people loving each other and coming together as one and not just you catering to your partner and them not catering to you, if that makes sense. So now I'm just gonna give you guys a little short, short, condensed version of two toxic relationships that I've been in. And I've been in many toxic relationships. We're gonna put that out there, but I'm just gonna give you guys two of them. So for one toxic relationship, this guy was just a cheater and he was just a liar. He lied about everything and he even lied about his age to get with me. And basically he would lie about the females that were around him and basically just tell me like, oh, don't worry about it. Like if they were flirting with him or if they were excessively being too touchy with him to just don't even worry about it, that they're just a friend, that they're just my sis, that they're just this, that they're just that, and to not worry about it. And this guy actually had a best friend that um, I was cool with and it turns out that he took her virginity and he didn't tell me about it he actually told me that they never did anything when i asked him so he lied about that and basically he basically cheated on me that's it he basically cheated on me that relationship ended which brings me on to the next relationship after that one i started talking to this guy and this guy knew everything that i was going through with my previous relationship with my ex that cheated. He knew everything, he knew that I was heartbroken, he knew everything that went on in that relationship and he promised to show me better and I honestly thought I was gonna marry this guy one day because he was just amazing. Like my mom loved him, like I loved him, like our bond was amazing and I just thought we were gonna be together for the long haul because I wanted the best for him and it seemed like he wanted the best for me but really, like I said, the relationship was one-sided, very toxic. It was very just one-sided and it was all about him. So with that, um, both of the relationships had emotional abuse. For the guy that I thought I was gonna marry one day, he just basically saw what I've been through and put me through it 10 times worse. Um, he woke up one day and decided that he didn't love me anymore and that he wanted to just be friends, but yet he wanted me to do the girlfriend duties. 
and yes if you know what i'm talking about yes that's exactly what it is he wanted me to do the girlfriend duties he wanted me to cook for him give him massages he wanted me to you know he wanted me to just do everything but yet he didn't want to give me the title as a girlfriend but he would just get upset if I would just be like, you know what, like I'm gonna go do my own thing, which doesn't make any sense. And there has been many times where I walked away from him and he reeled me back in with his little charm because he knew that I loved him and he knew that I would do anything for him and make me feel like we were gonna get back together or make me feel like we were gonna get together and then boom, shut me down again. And it was just a constant cycle. It was never just, it was never just, you're my girlfriend, I love you, I wanna be with you, like, let let's you know become one and love each other it was just a constant cycle of i want you to do x y and z but i don't want to be with you which doesn't make any sense so basically both of those relationships were very very toxic if you guys want a story time on both of those relationships i would definitely do that for you so comment down below and let me know but we're gonna keep going on with this so basically those relationships were very toxic and they were very emotionally abusing and even mentally abusive, which is crazy. So let me know if you guys want a story time on those. So now we're gonna go into the signs of toxic relationships. And guys, there are so many signs. Like I'm only gonna list like five of them or six, but there's so many signs of toxic relationships and I'm gonna list like a couple of them. But this is another thing, kind of what Dr. Carter was saying to acknowledge the behavior and the traits. So here we go. So one sign is feeling drained. You feel drained, you feel like, you just feel so tired like you don't even know like why you're in this relationship you're just there you're just a placement in this relationship you don't even know why you're there the love is not there you're not feeling the love you're not feeling cared for you're not feeling the, the sweetness of it you're not feeling that excitement you just feel drained and you're tired all the time and you're just like oh i have to deal with this person again or oh my god like here we go like you know what i mean or like here we go like let's just get through this day with this person that's one sign. Another sign is dishonesty. This person just can't be honest with you no matter what it is. No matter even if you tell him or her that you could be honest with me and I won't be mad. Or you could be honest with me, we could be honest with each other. Like let's not be one of those relationships where we lie to protect the other person. Let's keep it real with each other. This person just lies to you no matter what you say to them. Next one, lack of communication. You can't talk to your partner for nothing, I mean, same with those relationships that I've been in. You can't talk to your partner for anything. Anything that you say is an issue. They don't care about what you're saying. You can't tell your partner how you're feeling if you're hurt or if you're sad because that person's gonna blow up on you and flip it back on you and make it feel like it's your fault. Instead of taking accountability for their actions, they're gonna flip it back on you and make you feel like you are crazy and that you're stupid for thinking the things you do. And also lack of communication as in like, let's say if they like, I don't know, forget your birthday or something and they don't even tell you happy birthday or they forget your anniversary. That could be like another sign of toxic relationships, like being forgetful. And then one last sign is ignoring the needs and boundaries of your partner. So in relationships, we all have our boundaries. We all have things that we won't accept and we all have our needs. Let's say your boundaries in the relationship is like, okay, like if you're going to go somewhere with another girl, just let me know. And if your partner just ignores that, they don't let you know anything, they actually keep it from you and they just, and then when you bring it up to them, they flip it back on you and make you feel like you're crazy. Like, that's what I mean. And ignoring your needs, like ignoring the fact that let's say if, when you come home from work, you know, you just like when your partner just comes sit with you and spend time with you and ask you how your day is and all that stuff. But let's say instead, if your partner completely ignores that and just when you come up from work, they don't even acknowledge you. They don't even ask you how your day was. They just go straight to play the game or they just head right outside without even acknowledging you. Ignoring your needs, ignoring the things that make you feel special in the relationship. Another example for ignoring your needs is like, let's say if you like date night. You love date night, you love when your partner cooks for you, you love when your partner cooks that steak for you and mashed potatoes or something. And your partner doesn't do this at all. No love, no flowers, no kisses, no hugs, none of that. No, no intercourse, no none of that. Like they just ignore you completely. Like that's toxic because it's like, what are you in this relationship for? Where's the spark in this relationship? Why aren't you doing these things for me? I, You know, I love these things. Like little things to just make you feel special and they don't do that, they ignore it. That's another sign of a toxic relationship. Now there's different circumstances, so I don't want people to come for me and be like, oh, well, what if your partner's tired? Or what if this, or what if that? That is fine. Your partner can't be tired. Your partner can, you know, come home from a long day at work and maybe he doesn't want to do that. Or maybe she doesn't want to do that. 
but there's times where you make time for your partner to make them feel special to make them remember why you guys fell in love and if your partner isn't doing that for you then why are they there so lastly we're gonna go into the what now what to do i listed all this stuff for you and you're thinking and you're like hmm i feel like i'm in a toxic relationship Aaliyah, what do i do so i give my friends this one rule and i'm gonna talk to y'all like you're my friend so you're in a toxic relationship you're telling me that your partner is ignoring your needs and your partner just doesn't make you feel special and your partner is dishonest and your partner is this and your partner is that. I will tell you, sit them down one last time. Face to face, not over the phone, not in text messages, not on the cell phone, none of that. Face to face, sit down, have dinner, go out in public, whatever you want to do, go to a park. You're going to have a conversation in person. You're going to let your partner know that, hey, this is what's been bothering me this whole time. This is what I need. These are my boundaries. And this is what I need for this relationship to continue. And if they care about you and if they love you and if they want this relationship to continue, they're going to at least try to work towards being better. And they might slip up here and there, but they're going to take accountability for their actions and they're going to correct it and they're going to apologize and they're going to put in the work and all that stuff. And they're going to keep trying until they get it. And you guys are going to be happy and that's that. My second option is for you to leave. Now, if your partner is abusing you physically, leave. If your partner is calling you out your name, if your partner is hitting you, if your partner is disrespecting your family, if your partner is disrespecting you, if your partner is disrespecting your friend, if your partner is constantly cheating on you, if your partner is just being disrespectful openly in public to you in front of everybody and just cheating and just flirting with other girls in front of your face and all that other stuff, leave. Certain situations, relationships can be fixed, but in that type of situation, when it comes to the point where they're putting their hands on you, you need to leave. And for that, I'm going to be leaving the National Domestic Violence Hotline in my description below for you guys to call because if you're in that type of situation, please leave. Please do not stay with somebody that puts their hands on you. It's just not okay. It's not okay. They're disrespecting you as a human. They do not care about your human if that's what they're doing. So I'm going to leave that number down below. If you need help, please feel free to message me on my personal Instagram. I will help you. Whatever you need, I will help you. Those are your two options to either sit them down one last time and give them one more chance to fix themselves and if they don't you leave or you just leave completely and you just choose yourself and if you haven't seen my episode of where I talked about choosing yourself make sure you guys go watch that right here overall what's the hope for this video what do I want to come out of this video I want you guys to realize that mental health and toxic relationships do not go together I want you guys to recognize if your relationship is toxic and I want you guys to either leave or try to fix the relationship or try to get your partner to realize that they're toxic and that's another thing toxic relationships aren't just one-sided i forgot to mention toxic relationships aren't just one-sided it can actually be both people having very unhealthy traits and very unhealthy behaviors and if both of you guys are toxic you guys can both come together and work on it together and fix what you need to fix which is very very hard or you just leave and you work on it separately and if you guys want to get back together that is your thing but yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below if you want more Mental Health Monday videos like this one. And make sure you guys comment down below if you guys want a story time on my toxic relationships. And if you want me to talk about expectations in a relationship or even what to do when your friend is in a toxic relationship. So comment down below if you guys want that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.